Hi guys. Like the shirt? So my name is Mason West. Uh, I work in experience design and digital marketing, and I also happen to be a huge nerd who loves magic. Uh, I started doing the two around the same time, and it turns out I've actually found a ton of parallels from playing this game that I can use in what I do for work. Now, for those of you who don't know, magic is a game where you buy cards and build personal decks of spells that you cast against your opponent in a wizard's duel. Uh, it actually invented the collectible card game genre over 23 years ago, uh, with the game that, with the idea of being a game bigger than the box. Now, in what I do at work, clients and brands are trying to play way outside their normal boxes in an increasingly fragmented experience ecosystem, where I have to try and come up with stuff to help them connect with their audiences. The guy who I connect with in Magic is this dude, Mark Rosewater. He uh, is the head designer, and he basically convinced me that Willy Wonka is a real person. He is giving away a masterclass in experience design over social media with his content on his blog and his podcast. Now, like me, Mark started his life as a writer. So he tends to talk about experience design in terms of making stories. Uh, in my world, those look like customer journeys. And the thing that magic helps me remember all the time is you have to pay attention to the emotional notes of those story, almost like you're making a piece of music or an awesome movie. It turns out there are really good rules for creating these kinds of story, which Mark refers to uh, through what he learned in communications theory. And there's basically three things that humans actually crave in stories, comfort, surprise, and completion. Comfort comes from our need to be safe and familiar. Uh, and it's why people like me are also resisting that latest iOS update because I don't want to deal with the changes and why most people are actually pretty okay with the layout of every Bootstrap website. <laughs> Surprise is about the thrill of something new and exciting. And it's not functionally necessary for most experiences, but it is necessary for experiences that you love and want to come back to. It's why Groupon keeps sending you those surprise emails every morning and why you love seeing what Netflix has in store for you. Completion is about pattern recognition. Our brains are great at completing patterns. When we see them, we want to fill in the blank to the next step, or in this case, we want to fix them if we see something broken. So that's all great at the generic level, but it turns out you're actually making stories for individual people who tend to be different. Uh, this is why personas are a really useful tool, and Magic has created great ones about their audience. They're actually shared with Magic players, and players will use these names to refer to themselves in terms of why they play the game. That points out that words, stories, and names are really, really important when it comes to creating a language about experience design because they help you understand and discuss complex concepts. One of the ideas that magic designers use a lot is called lenticular design. It's a word that they made up in order to talk about making cards that are simple on the surface and yet have a lot of strategic depth for more experienced players so they can make smart uses of their resources. It turns out you can only print so many cards in a set. In my world, a term that I've been using a lot lately is design sprints, which is a week-long process to come up with cool ideas and then test them and get feedback. When I talk to clients about it, they don't really know the details of the process on the surface, but they know it's about a different way to do projects that's more fast and iterative. Speaking of feedback, it's critical in any kind of experience, and Magic is no exception. When they ask new players after their first time if they would play the game again, the only acceptable answer is a resounding, heck yeah. Uh, and that's because humans are really mixed when it comes to giving feedback. It turns out we're really great at kind of sensing when something is wrong and responding that way, and pretty much terrible when it comes to talking about it and explaining why it's wrong, and even worse, at talking about how we might fix it. But when you do find a problem, everything has to be on the table to fixing it. Last year, Magic made a fundamental shift in how they create and release their game from doing sets of three to sets of two. And that sounds small, but they had to fundamentally overhaul huge aspects of their company to do it, and it was the right call. Now, there are a lot of benefits to actually just playing games, which as you can tell from this picture of my daughter, uh, I'm doing everything I can to put more gamers out there in the world. <laughs> and that's because Games teach you how to solve problems. They give you obstacles and restraints in a world where you know there is a way to solve it. That's why there's a really popular design thinking technique where you take problem statements and reframe them in terms of how might we. So you're immediately thinking about solving the problem instead of wondering if it can be solved. Games also teach creativity by forcing random connections. There are over 15,000 cards that have been printed in Magic history, and there are formats that you can pull from any of them in order to find unique ways to make your deck work. 
This is a picture of a guy punching a bear. <clears throat> I leave you with this because it's one of the other gifts that magic has given to me, uh, and it describes the feeling that I get when I'm playing a great game or making an awesome worthwhile experience. It's a feeling I hope you guys all know, and I inspire you to go get more of it.